smoking hot right now is the Novavax. Novavax is the initiative developed by the uh, CEPI. So CEPI is the Coalition to Pandemic Preparedness Innovations. This uh, CEPI was active far before the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic and one of the initiative takers and a donor is Norway. Also, this is a pet project of the Bill Gates Foundation, which have donated a lot of money to Novavax. Novavax is partly could be regarded as a protein subunit vaccine, but it can also be can also be regarded as a nanoparticle. The spike contains this uh, double proline amino acid substitution, which is made in order to stabilize the prefusion complex as most other vaccines do, except for AstraZeneca. Uh, the protein is produced using baculovirus, which is an insect virus that infects insect cells. And it's a very common way for producing very large amounts of protein. Here they use a cell line called SF9 moth, and that's a moth cell line. The spike protein is uh, translocated to the surface of this SF9 uh, cell that sits on the plasma membrane. Then the spike is gently harvested and then it happens to assemble into a small synthetic uh, nanoparticle. So 14 spike proteins make a little nanoparticle that you see up in the right corner. I don't, I don't think this was a design feature. I think they just discovered this. Then the protein nanoparticle is mixed with the saponine based adjuvant that we talked about and uh, it, this is a, an adjuvant that I do not know so much about this is uh, a special adjuvant contain um, owned by Novavax so uh, the specifics of this I'm not sure about so on the 14th of June there was a press release by the company Novavax and uh, they have really nice uh, st statistics for the protection. They had no uh, no death and no hospitalization in the vaccination group. Also, I've seen data on the antibodies and the neutralizing antibodies induced by Novavax, and they are much higher the levels than what you see with the RNA vaccines. The way the way I find Novavax principally interesting is that they have this really great adjuvant response by combining very many subunits in one tiny little particles and this has partly got to do with how the b-cell receptor works and the b-cell receptor cross-linking which it achieves on the b-cells that recognize the, the virus particle or in this case the nanoparticle this has a, an adjuvant effect in itself, and it's a really great way to formulate an antigen. The second protein vaccine that is principally interesting is the Soberana 2. So the, uh, the Epi Epidemiological Research Institute called Fi Finlay Institute in Cuba has been developing three different uh, proteins uh, for vaccination against SARS-CoV-2. And uh, part of this has got to do with the uh, difficulties that Cuba has to, to get hold of vaccines because of the US embargo. But also Cuba has a great history of developing vaccines. Uh, so the small cell lung carcinoma vaccine coming out of Cuba is, uh, is really uh, world news. So I'm very happy to see that Cuba is producing this vaccine because it's also going to be available for uh, countries which are not having the capacity to buy expensive vaccines from the big companies. So it's currently tested in Cuba and Iran and the results from this trial are expected any, any day. So keep your eyes out for this because this will be a very important type of vaccine for uh, poor countries. So what they did with this vaccine, with the Soberana 2, is that they took a, part, took a part of the spike which induces the neutralizing antibodies. So that's the RBD sequence. And uh, this is the residues uh, 333 to uh, 527. In addition to the RBD, they also included amino acids 507 to 541. 
and this was to get the cysteine at position 538 into the molecule. 538 uh, is usually connected to cysteine 590, but that is not in this uh, protein. So instead, this leaves the cysteine 530 to be a free uh, SH group. This free SH group is then used to connect to um, uh, a tetanus toxoid, which is a vaccine against the tetanus toxin, and it's uh, just inactivated. Here it's also modified to contain um, a chemical group that can bind to the free SH group of the RBD domain. The RBD domain is then conjugated onto the tetanus toxin, which in itself has an adjuvant function because it's a toxin, and, and uh, this can be done up to six times. And once we have this uh, new little particle, we have a similar function of, of this tetanus toxin as what that we have with the Novavax. We have multimers of the antigen. And multimers of the antigen means that one molecule can um, interact with several different B cell receptors uh, on the same B cell, and uh, that brings them together. And this is uh, again the same type of adjuvant antigen effect.